mind your business. Mind your business. Mind your business. Mind your business. For the people who are learning to mind their business. Hello, welcome to Mind Your Business. I am Phil Hudson. Tug Coward is out. Uh, I'm probably dealing with Jacob doing something like dads do. But today we have a special guest, Martina Albano. She's a mastering engineer, and you serve on the board of governors for the Atlanta Recording Academy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's an exciting one. The show is always presented by SR Homes with uh, metro with communities throughout the metro area for you. Visit them at srhomes.com. Um, so Martina, the first thing I'm going to ask you that's my favorite question to ask you, which drives you nuts: What's the difference between mixing and mastering? Okay, so in mixing, a mixing engineer, it takes all the, the tracks that are recorded and he creates um, the right balance. He decides, you know, what tone every instrument should have and basically finish off the creative part of the music production. And then I make sure that that song can play well in every system. So, for example, from the car to uh, radio station to your home system. And I also make sure that um, it's the presentation of the tracks is at its best. So do you pick, so, like, the order of the tracks? Uh, sometimes I help artists pick the order. I definitely, like, if it's an album, I help create transitions so that they are musical and not just, like, the like mechanical two seconds in between. But to me, it mostly has to do with making sure that Technically, it works well in all different systems, and that the psychoacoustic of, of the track, which means like how the human brain actually perceives the song, is right. So it's much more macro, whereas the yes. mixing engineer is kind of the micro stuff. Yes. So I I do not work with single art tracks. So I'm, I I never. Uh, so full albums. Or singles, but I um, I don't work on like a single guitar tracks or the vocal tracks. But I get everything together, and I make sure that everything together works well. So what do you do if you if you hear like a guitar track that's awful? Okay, well um, I if you're like, you're like man, the mixing engineer. Yeah. Well, guitar? sometimes, but sometimes if it's something that it's very technically wrong, I would go back to the mixing engineer and bring it up. But sometimes when it's just um, like a taste preference of the artist. I also recognize that, you know, maybe my taste is not necessarily what the artist is going for. And I, I ch always try to understand what they are going for and try to help them achieve their goal rather than imposing mine. So kind of like, like if someone hears Jack White's guitar stuff, you might not know he's going for that retro sound. Exactly. So you might clean it up and Jack White's like, what the heck, that's what exactly, I was going for. Exactly, exactly. So I try to understand what they want out of the record and understand really what their vision is rather than saying, this is what I think the best thing and, you know, because then every music would sound the same, you know, so yeah. So you've worked with quite a few people. You mentioned Lucy Grays, Avery yeah. Wilson and Cassie. Yes. Tell us about what you did with them and who they are and kind of how yes. that project started. So um, Lucy Graves, uh, she is a great, singer and pianist and after she I think she toured with Black Eyed Peas and Cilla Green for many years as a keyboard player. And she's from Atlanta? She's from New Zealand. Oh cool. And she lived in LA for a while and then she now lives in Atlanta and she's just releasing her uh, solo music now and it's really interesting because it's very soul, um, has a little bit of funk in it and very just has a lot of influence so it's been a really interesting like project to work on and she's releasing like singles um, I think monthly or bi-monthly. So, are you um, seeing more singles than the albums? Definitely. Yeah. Or even if, the, if even if a project starts as an album, like the, as a whole concept, then people will be their marketing releasing. team comes in and they're like break it down. Yeah, so they magic. release it. Yeah, because you know, and a lot of like a lot of work I see that's been it's done before anything even comes out. So they have a lot of marketing before a single comes out, and then one comes out, and then a lot of marketing before the next one comes out because. Otherwise, there's just so much music that's coming out every day that if they just drop an album, they may it get a momentum. Lost in the weeds. Yeah, it may get the momentum for a few days, and then you know that that's it. It's like Little Nas X; he's just slowly releasing them. Exactly, and I, I think that's smart. It just kind of you keep feeding um, music with two people, so that's good. Um, and then, so I really, I really enjoyed working with her because, like I said, it's a very musical project. Um, and then also. Um, Avery Wilson also, he's an amazing singer. And so he released his EP recently. It's called A34. And I hope that's the name. 
But, okay, sorry. We, we, we can <laughs> check and we'll pull it right out. Oh, 824. So Avery will get a lot of love on <laughs> A lot of love on the line. But yeah, he's an amazing singer. So because I also started as a singer, that was a project that I really enjoyed working on. I forget about that. I see yeah. you singing every now and then on piano. On yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes I need to also get that creative, you yeah. know, out. Do you ever help any of your artists, like, do they ever hit like a writer's block or something and you're just down the hall working on their project or something? They're like, hey, get in here. Um, or are they too greedy and they don't want to give you writer, songwriter credits? Maybe. Well, I, so I get them at the very end of their process. So they have gone through not just writing, but figuring out who's going to play it, who's going to produce it, recording and mixing it. So unfortunately, a lot of time when they come to me, they are tired of thinking they're about done. that song. It's, they're they're it's done. They're, they're like, please, on. like, finish this song. I need to release it, you know, most of the time. Thinking about the tour. Exactly. So, like, you know, n not that much. But I work... You know, I've worked in a facility where there's a lot of different production rooms, so it actually often happens that someone needs like backgrounds or someone needs a demo and they ask me to go and just sing through it or add vocals. So that's definitely been cool because it keeps the balance between like very like technical job and still the creative being able side. to yeah. Yeah, do music. So that's been cool. Um, so mean, yeah. Cassie? And uh, Cassie, well, she's uh, more like R&B. Uh, artist, so it's a little bit. I mean, every Western is, is R&B too, but Cassie's a very like uh, more traditional R&B, and I, I really enjoyed working on those tracks. Um, and the uh, the also the mixing engineer is here in Atlanta, so uh, it's been a cool project to be part of. Um, she hasn't released music in many years, so it's, I think her fans were like hungry for more music. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I love that because then you really get a big, you know, momentum. Yeah, it's everybody. Just like a tool record. Exactly. Everybody's waiting on Tool. Exactly. Do you yeah. like Tool? Yeah. I really? Mean, I mean, um, yes. I mean, it's hard, like I, there's so much. There's I guess you appreciate all kinds of music. Just yes, being in exactly. Your industry. Yes. Yes. There's only. I mean, I, I also because with mastering too differently. Going back to like the difference between mixing is also, it's not as genre specific as mixing is. So I really can work with any genre from, you know, rock to pop to uh, trap. Uh, you hate most songs when you're done working on them because no. you've heard them so much? No, no, no. Be, no is no, it because no. you're listening in such small sections? No, I listen to the whole track over in and one, over. In but one sitting? Yeah, but I feel like, you know, once, um, you know, after years of doing this, I have developed, you know, just intuition and understanding, you know, of what I need to do. So I, I really don't sit with the track longer than I need to. So it's it's a good amount of time to like the track, know that I've given a good input, a good. Um, oh, you like hearing your work? Yeah, and right. then at the end I'm done. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So you went, you got, I guess your. Did you learn how to master at Berkeley? I did not. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, Berkeley College of Music in Boston, correct? Yes. It's like the Harvard, Yale, whatever you want to call it, of music. Yeah. Um, so you were born in Italy, yeah. and did you come to America to go there? I did. So how yeah. did you make that decision, and what did you study there? You studied, Did you study singing? I, Songwriting, I, right? I enter as a singer. I'll guess eventually. That's okay. I <laughs> enter as a singer, and then my major is called Contemporary Writing and Production, which... Um, is has nothing to do with mastery. That's a short answer, but it's basically I used to like uh, write for big bands and orchestras, and also the the production part was more like um, like electronic production on the computer rather than like engineering. And it's almost like a music director. Um, yeah, a little bit, but more like maybe creating like a beat for it or recording like a drums and then figuring out you know other parts around it. Like a producer, it. kind of. Yeah. Yeah, but also like in a, what they call like a ranger because I used to maybe take songs and write like all the horns part or you know actually hand write, transpose the parts for like orchestra players and stuff like that and then direct the orchestras. And for people who are meant to do that, that is an incredible major because when do you have access to a whole full orchestra, right? Yeah. That you can give you can your own, on. yeah, that you can give your own piece and hear how it sounds but I mean, it just wasn't my thing. And um, so I, I'm grateful for it. I decided to stick with it because I, I wanted to know about music and how music is created. And I realized that even though I was more interested in engineering, if I started, like engineering, it's easier for me to learn. So 
I would have I would never pick up an arranging book now. So I'm like, let me do that in college so that I get it out of yeah, the way. You know, get it done with so that I know when I hear, you know, actual real musicians, like what are they doing? You know, I wanna know that. So I think that's been really interesting. And also, you know, when you write for an orchestra, you wanna create like the, the orchestra sound is um it's basically like one one sound at the end, one voice at the end. And you don't really hear every single instrument at, on its own. So that's kind of what I do in mastering, because I, even though there are different elements in the music, I end up having to hear everything together and hear how it sounds together. So I can see how also some stuff that may not um, seem connected are actually influencing how I do the engineering work too. Did you meet anyone at Berkeley who is fam super famous today? Super famous today. Um, like we were just talking about, like you yeah, said, Quincy Jones. Yeah. Went there, uh, Michael Jackson's thriller producer. Yeah. Um, who else? Ed Roland went there. Well, from Soul. I, well, a close friend of mine, Simone Torres, she is also an engineer, vocal engineer, and she just worked on Cardi B, I Like It, Be Careful, Camila Cabello, she just did the new track um, for Normani. Uh, so, she, I mean, she's an engineer, not a, you know, not a stage, front, yeah. not the people, but she worked on huge records. And I think the, per, like, Charlie Puth went like, oh, yeah. to school, like, right, like, a, like he was, he's older than me, but like, just, a, you know, we kind he was of there? met. Yeah, we met, I think, met at a hallway. How many people go to school there? It's relatively uh, small, sure. right? Yeah. Like, way under 10 grand? 10,000? When 10 I went, number. definitely. Yeah. When I went, definitely. Now, they have enlarged the school, so I'm not sure now how many numbers. So, so after you graduated, you went to LA? I, I actually went to LA before I graduated. Is that where you worked on the Resident Evil 2 soundtrack? Yeah. So yes. tell us about that. So, and it's interesting because yes. we talk about it um, on the show regularly, like, you know, Atlanta's kind of a movie hub, yeah. and now our music industry is finally benefiting yeah. from that. So you kind of were there yeah. before Atlanta got to see all this stuff. Yeah, so I, um, I just wanted, really it started for a lame reason. It's because I did not want to stay in Boston during the winter because it was too it's cold. Not lame. So I just, it's a legit reason. Uh, yeah, so I just emailed. Does it ever snow in Italy? Yeah, yeah, it does. Up north, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you, yeah. Are you from northern or southern? North, Italy? north. Okay, so, so you're, I so grew you're up used skiing to, and so yeah. So you know what's up. You're like I'm done. Yeah, with but this. I want to choose that I'm going to go skiing and not, you know, <laughs> to yeah, be like I have to deal every day. Sitting at a bus day. stop freezing. Exactly. Yep. So I emailed this composer that uh, Nima Fakrara that I knew was working on a cool project and he just left Hans Zimmer studio, and I just emailed him and I asked if I could go, you know, kind of assist him and work under him. So it kind of just happened randomly. He said yes, and then I, I went there. He's a pretty big deal, right? Yeah, I mean, he worked on a lot of like really cool movies as a composer, and it was I learned so much from working at the studio. Again, he was a composer, so I was working, you know, just helping him out with different things. And he worked on Resident Evil when I was there, and I, I created sounds for him to write the music for it. Like creepy sounds. Definitely creepy sounds. <laughs> all the like drones, like like all those weird sounds. Uh, I think is most yeah. of that done on a computer. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's yes and no. Some of it it's recording, like maybe we recorded, maybe you know we took like string recordings, like a violin, and then we brought it down a lot of octaves. So instead of you know it's like yeah. you know, and then we kind of created you know different loops, different just version of it with the computer. You're quite seeing those video games, the Resident Evil video games. They will scare the hell out of you. Okay, so it's weird. I know, because of the music we created. <laughs> yeah, 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 seriously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but no, actually, no. I'm a little bit of like, I just don't you don't like, like the horror. scary stuff, do you? No, I can see that. So like, I yeah. So I will leave that up to you know whoever <laughs> loves yeah, it to enjoy. I'm, I can't do it either. But yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yes, so that's kind of how that happened. And then when I was when I got done with that was project, was that kind of your first professional experience? Yeah. Yeah, before that, everything else I did was more singing, and I had, you know, uh, I had worked on composition, but more in school. So, um, but after that project was over, I actually decided to uh, that I needed to finish my degree, differently from all that list of people that. Um, what made you want to finish your degree? I saw it. I really was missing like, like you a saw few there's more classes. To learn? Or you wanted your degree? I wanted my degree for sure. Gotcha. Yeah, 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 and I only had like. I think one one full semester and then other two classes. I was like, I you know, I got up to this point. It just made no sense. So I decided to go back with the intention of moving to LA. And then I kept hearing about Atlanta, Atlanta, and like I just could feel that there was a lot more 
like a growing vibe. Like it wasn't uh, as saturated as LA. Yeah, if you go to LA, everybody at the beginning is a small fish in a big pond. Whereas yeah, in Atlanta, exactly. you can come in a small fish in a growing Yeah, pond. and I, you know, when I moved here, I, I found a studio that I could work out off and um, I just started, you know, finding my own clients and working as a freelancer. And I had a, a ton of clients, like already my first year that I was here doing uh, mastering. So I, and, and I got involved with the Recording Academy and Georgia Music Partners. And so I just, I just decided to stay because it worked great. So how did you get yeah. involved in the Recording Academy? I, and for those of you who don't know, that's the Grammys. Yeah. Um, or they give the award the Grammys. Yeah, so first, the first step was becoming a member. Mm -hmm. And when I, you know, they, they required a certain amount of tracks, 12 tracks that were digital release at the time. Now it changed a little bit. But um, so I, I had that already. So I became a voting member. And then I was interested in uh, running for the board of governors. And that was a little bit, you know, just kind of a shot in the dark. Because I was like, I just, I had just moved here like less than a year. And then I was put on the ballot and then it's an open voting and they voted for me to be on the board. And I've been, this is my fourth year on it. So it's my second turn on it. And um, they have District Advocacy Day in October? In October, yes. So that's, and actually we, I've done that for five years and last year, and you I, got to sing to John, did you sing to John Lewis? I did, was I did. Was that super cool? It was super cool, yeah, absolutely. Do they know who he is in Italy? I, I think so, yeah. So they know about the American Civil Rights Movement and stuff? Yeah, well, Mitali was school. super, super, like, invested in MLK. Like, even when I brought my parents to the museum, MLK Why? Museum, I guess maybe just something that in that time was very felt. Like, when I brought my parents to the MLK Museum, they started crying and they were there, and it was just a very, I think, felt. Well, I know, like, when it, the initial migration from Italians to yeah. New York happened, That's like they weren't event. exactly welcomed very yeah. in a friendly way. Yeah. So it might be a connection there where they see... I don't know. It's maybe, you know, after... I, I just may, probably thought he was just very invested in just any civil rights movement, after, you know, during that time. That's cool. Um, so, yeah. So that... So, yes, they, they do know who he is. I hope so. I live maybe in a small little generation. Georgia world, so I don't know what goes on outside. <laughs> maybe of it. not the new generation, but my parents know. So that was cool. And that happens every year that we have this, you know, we like, want to maintain that open conversation with congressmen and senators and, you know, make sure that they know who the music industry is and what do we do and how they can support us. And, and the Music Modernization Act was a big yeah, push. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Which is trying and to catch, uh, I guess, the royalty payments up with. Um, the techno technological advances that we're seeing in music. So, you know, obviously the uh, the economy moves a lot faster than our legislation. So there's an, you know, educational component that has to go in there to teaching our lawmakers kind of where the economy is going. Yeah, and that the Music Modernization Act was the biggest copyright reform in decades. Um, that, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's incredible that we got unanimous support. Yeah. So that was really great. And, um, but there's a lot of new, you know, new legislation that, really would benefit both, you know, bigger artists as well as small creators. Mm -hmm. So in October, I think October 2nd, that's when we're going to meet again. Um, and I actually, like, starting last year, I started, like, leading the conversation with them. So that's been very, like, a lot of responsibility, but yeah. it's been interesting because I actually get to dive deeper in the legislation. Um, it's weird it's how many different, like, parts of just the world you get in touch with music. Yeah. Yeah. Like Paul, like would you ever have guessed at Berkeley you'd be dealing with people like John Lewis? No, 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 no. And I and by now like I've I've, I've worked with that on a national level. I also work with George. Did you do the Storm Partners. the Hill? I did not. Okay. I did not. But I worked with um, also Georgia Music Partner on the yeah. state level, and I also worked on the city level for other you know working with other ordinances that were going on. So it's just being all a learning process because I didn't grow up here. So I, you know even just learning how it all works. You know what different you know representative of the state versus national representatives are. I just I have a lot to learn. Yeah, yeah. I think it's good. interesting how it's bipartisan. Like yeah. you know, so many things in America are divisive uh, among party lines, but music is yeah. one of those unifiers. Definitely, you know, universal yeah. unifiers. Really. Yeah, that's definitely why. Like I'm very happy to be you know part of this and maintaining the conversation with everyone. So what? I'm sorry, go ahead. No, just even people that may have, you know, preconception of, of why, you know, maybe they'd be opposed to it. It's really interesting to um, explain the legislation and explain who the music creators really are. And most, I mean, most of the time we had a very great response to it. 
So my, one of my favorite things you do is you work with the ATL Collective. Yeah. And y'all do some pretty bomb shows. Yes. Bomb is a good word for you old people. <laughs> and so what, tell well, us about some shows you do and what you do there. Well, so I have just recently joined their um, programming committee and they create shows. They basically redo um, famous albums front to back every song in the in the album and, and they, I feel like you always have one right around Christmas time yeah it's uh, James Brown oh, Funky it's James Christmas, Brown Christmas Funky Christmas okay so it yeah. is James Brown every year it's, yeah. and that's usually the Buckhead Theater right it is yeah, okay, cool. yeah yeah and then we have they have like because they have their traditional shows like the one that they have every year they have Michael Jackson thriller around Halloween I think, I think they they've have, done Prince recently. Yes, and they have Shade around like Valentine's Day. Those are like the mu you must see shows if yeah. you're in Atlanta. And but then they, and they have different series. They had a Paula sing uh, a Paula series, which is more like female centered uh, bands now. Um, and basically, the really awesome thing is that they have both this element of. Um, just more traditional listening to where they do a whole album. So it, I think it, it, it really serves the older generation who really appreciates the music and it's kind of lost with this like, you know, this new like Everything singles. Going, yeah, yeah every really new streaming playlist rather than, you know, listen to albums. But they use musicians that are currently like touring musicians that are up and coming musicians that they can give a new like twist to the music. And this way they both serve you know, they both have that connection to the music, the albums, as well as to the new generation, and they showcase new artists that are really, you know, good to know. That you know, then people get out of the concert and they've heard their favorite music and they learn about new artists. So, I love them, and I think <laughs> they, you know, really because I that was one of the first show that I went to see when I moved to Atlanta. No I saw. Um, You've been here what, six years now. Five, almost five. five. Well, okay. it'll be five in January. And so I literally met you like right when you came here? I think so, yeah. Oh, that the year after maybe, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, and I watched, like I saw Stevie Wonder's song in the Key of Life oh, yeah, at yeah, Terminal yeah. West. Yeah, that I was, was that re they, all, they do that also often, but yeah. I, I just love how also they match the album with the venue. And yeah. So, yeah, so that's Terminal West awesome. Yeah, I love Terminal West. Just had a balling party there. Yeah. Who, uh, with, who, all, who all came out? For the, the recording academy? Yeah, for the recording academy party. Uh, we had Blanca Brown. T-Pain. T-Pain. Baby Rose, which is an amazing new artist yeah. to check out from Atlanta. Ari Lennox. And we had Michelle, Michelle Malone. Oh, yeah. Right Michelle Malone's the bomb. Yeah, I think that was, that was it, right? Yeah, not a bad showing, right? Not a bad not showing a bad at showing. all. So you also work with, and we have the, the director of Collinwood coming, coming through. Tell us about Collinwood a little bit and what you yeah. do there and kind of what they do. Yeah, so I started um, there back when uh, Peggy Johnson was the director. Who's a rock star? Rock star. Really a rock star. So uh, she brought me on as just uh, an instructor. That's when I first came here. She just moved into something pretty cool. Yes, as, as always. Yeah. But I she always does cool stuff, yeah. I have to catch up with her. She's really one of those people who's like, a, we talk about it, so we have a lot of like, uh, executives on yeah. here, like business yeah. executives. And we always talk about it's not necessarily the industry, it's it's your leadership qualities, yeah. right? Yeah. And so she knows how to just put a team together, put goals together, and start knocking them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, I mean, I she really made kind of like a great school. Um, and I, I first, I mean, I, I joined... I, I joined their teacher instructor um, group right after I moved here, and then in 2017 I became the music director. So I helped you know manage the teacher, the teachers, the lessons, the students, uh, and it's a, you know it was a small school, and we're I have a lot, a lot of new plans that they're gonna start in September. So you know make the program bigger, serve more. Uh, students hopefully you know get like a band together or something where you know students cannot just have their uh, little private lesson half an hour a week but they can also engage with other students um, and I think you know the, the reason why I think Peggy brought music to Callenwald was to to be able to give that co to that community uh, music access to a choir access to you know just a place that they can come and make music together so I look forward in you developing some more pro project like that. It's interesting seeing like, you know, Atlanta's specifically now known for hip hop so much. Yeah. And it's just interesting seeing how the classics are coming in and being embraced by the youth. Yeah. Because you would think they all are just like, get me to a computer, 
give me yeah. to a computer, but they're actually yeah. attracted to the classics for some reason. Yeah, well, we do have a we do have also a recording studio. We do also offer production classes, so we really also cover that needs too. But what I, do you think it is though that's making these kids where they see all the rappers and stuff, and they're like, no, I still think that violin's cool. I think they like both. Okay. You know, I think they like both, and I'm really excited for them to be able to make their own. Um, you know, in the future with that new generation to make their own um, just mixture of those two and maybe bring some, you know, musical element in the more, you know, uh, computer-based music. But, I mean, I yeah, it's, I think I can speak for every other teacher, you know, our really goal is to just make them passionate about music in general. Like a lot of students that I had, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have them with trap music because, you know, sometimes you know, it's like curse words and parents don't like it. But my goal is just to, to teach them to be passionate about music. Yeah. And if you get them like that, then, then um, I think their music will always be part of their life, you know. So, and the, their location at Calawan is beautiful. The facility is so awesome that it just, it's an awesome environment. To you brought up trap music. music. You just went to the trap museum. I did. Tell us about, tell us about <laughs> And they just did a Nipsey Hussle exhibition, right? They did. How, they did. How's that? It's really awesome. Yeah, the piece on him, which I, I just I just missed to see who the artist that did his painting was, but that was amazing. And yeah, we actually had a, a field trip. Did you say they have like an escape room? That's what we did yesterday. So the way, I tell so, you, I know they had the escape room. Yeah. So it's like is, escape the trap, right? Oh my God, it's or is amazing. Or it escape the bluff? Escape, escape the trap. In the bluff. In the bluff. Okay. Definitely in the bluff. <laughs> but it's, I mean, so we actually had a, like a field trip with the producer and engineer wing. I guess a few people from the producer and engineer wing of the Grammys. Tom Kidd, Matt Still, I bet. What, to, yeah, Tom Kidd. Um, well, Elliot Carter, who's TI engineer, he's the person that invited us He's there. the chief engineer at Grand Hustle Records, right? I think so. I think so. Yeah. Elliot Carter's the man. Check him out if, yeah. you, if you're around. Well, and he had us over and the... the uh, the museum was actually closed yesterday, so we had a lot of time oh, no to you know, just walk around and yeah. And the trap, the escape room is amazing. We had so much fun. I can't, like, I don't want to obviously like Ruin reveal yeah. anything, but just to be able to be with with those people that we work with, it was just the hilarious. Too. It was hilarious. Yes. Did um, you go to uh, Two Chains' haunted house? I did not. Dude, that was hilarious. That was good. So like you came around like a, yeah. so it was like a trap theme haunted house. Yeah. And so like you come around a corner and there's two like crackhead zombies playing dice. That was amazing. It yeah, was really well, amazing. it's also awesome because I don't know if this happens every time, but we had two actors that actually came in the escape room with us and they were acting, you know, part like, like acting the whole no time. You had no idea they were actors? Well you, well, you knew they were actors, but they were just, they were acting, you know, like they lived in, in that like trap house, uh, gotcha, you know? Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And it was That's kind of creepy too. Yeah, but I mean, you knew they were acting, but so it was creepy. hilarious. It was, we had the best time. That's awesome. So that's definitely something like a must do in Atlanta. And it was very interesting because, you know, it's... Part of our culture. Exactly, you yeah. know, and I like, even though maybe it's something that, you know, um, I mean, it, I think it's really interesting to see just, I mean, again, coming from Italy, I didn't even know what trap meant. No trapping in Italy? Well, there's definitely equivalence, but just I didn't know that was the name like in English. I mean, not the trap music, but just the name and the meaning behind even the word. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's interesting because I think trap today is in every every pop song today yeah. has trap. So you want to know where it came from, and you want to give you know uh, the right uh, credit to who developed that style, and you know instead of just seeing like a pop, you know. So yeah. So. So that's it. So that it traps Atlanta. I said when I think Italy, I think opera very, very much. So. No, now we have there's this weird connection, especially between the city I'm from, Milan and Atlanta, mm -hmm. where actually is it a hip hop city now. It is, but also like an artist that a rapper that I used to listen when I was in high school. Now just had one of my friend here in Atlanta, Major Seven. He he produced his album in Italy. Oh, cool. And we had all we have all of this weird connection between Milan and Atlanta that I wasn't even like. I can't keep up with it. Rap's going universal because it's yeah, in and China especially now. like Atlanta trap, not any rap. Yeah, that's true. You know, yeah. right now, you know, not. I mean, I, yeah, it's just K-pop. It's infused K-pop. It's in China big time, which is crazy because the Chinese do not like that culture at all. Yeah, but they can't. They can't deny. Yeah, the youth. and even I think even like J-pop. It's like is that Japan, K -pop, Japanese K-pop, Japanese pop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Nice. So yeah. the, kind of on the professional side, if I'm a musician, how do I get you to work on my project? Um, well, I, 
and very easy to reach because either you know Instagram website you know I'm pretty good with responding but um, I will you I, take on any project for the right amount of money or will you say no to certain stuff I will say no to some stuff I the way I see it for me there's a triangle this is actually one thing I learned at Berkeley that I would just it's my top like suggestion for anyone okay. any business there's a triangle you have good money good music good people you need to have two so I'll take a project where the people are awesome and their music is awesome and they may not have the budget. I'll take a project if the music is awesome and it pays well, but the people, uh-uh. That's and a I'll, good rule of thumb. You know, and I'll take You're a, never going to have best of everything. I mean, right? you may, you may, but I'm just saying you have to have two because otherwise... Man, I can't find it. Uh? The best of everything, I can't find it. I blame it on Tug, who's not here today. I probably have not found it yet, but... I'm just saying, I'm not saying it's not possible to find, but definitely like, it's hard to find two of those. Yeah, you know, absolutely. So that's where I try to do. So I, I do, you know, one, one side, and, and this is why also I like to partner up with mixing engineer because they do the part before me and I trust them, I trust their work. So usually when I partner up with them, I get, you know, I, at least I know I get good music and good people. Yeah. Right, and then if the money is there too, great. So you know? we'll, we'll finish it on some Grammy stories. Yeah. The the dark stuff, uh -oh. the fun stuff. So you've been to, what, two Grammys or three? Uh, I've been to three. So two two in L.A. and one in New York, right? Yes. Would you like, which, which city did you like the most between New York and L.A.? Um, hmm. I liked L.A. a lot more than New York. Just you because, did? Yeah, it's because I've, and I feel like it's because L.A., if you think about it, it's built on the entertainment industry, right? Whereas New yeah. York, it's like, we have everything in the world here. Yeah. Entertainment's just another subset of what we are and where it's almost like to them, they're just like, at the same time, like Times Square was like, I mean, out. Yes, weekend. but also like the nominees party in New York and that, um, the, what is it called? The, the really, the room. The theater kind of thing? The room that was, no, that was the producer and engineer wing party, which was in this oh, really yeah. tall building. And you always saw, was it Alicia Keys? Yes. Alicia Keys and Swiss Beats with and like Shakira. What? So you all saw Alicia Keys with like 200 people, if that. Yeah. Like yeah. a super intimate room. Yeah, yeah which is like, that's one of the first albums that I ever learned to like sing, play and write. Did she sing the New York song? No. Really? She. <laughs> like, I, I probably don't she remember. She did at the Grammys, right? The one she yeah, hosted, she right? Did, yeah, yeah. But yeah, she was she was amazing. And Swiss Beats and Shakira were all there playing. That was amazing. Have you ever been to the Clive Davis party? I have not. How do you get to the Clive Davis party? That's like next level. That's the next level stuff. <laughs> that's probably next level. I'm like, you know, I'm young enough to where I have like, you know, I have somewhere to work towards. Yeah, that's what, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, you know, I think in New York it was their 60th anniversary and yep. they did an, I, th the I think they yes. And I think they did Shout an amazing job. Shout out Ian Shoemaker for stealing like 50 of those. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I mean, I think they did a great job in New York, but LA is definitely, it has a more like, party vibe overall yeah for sure yeah there's more space to you know to do different parties and that was my first time in LA like yeah. as an adult and I was like this yeah. is where it's at yeah yeah, yeah. and then wherever the, the nominee party was yeah that was cool. off the chain yeah so go check out my Instagram and you can see like videos from the party. and mine it's too cool. you can yeah. see those parties who was your who was your friend that we all fell in love with from Italy Oh, Virginia. Say it again. Virginia. Yes, yeah, so Virginia. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, she... My uh, all-time best friend. Yep, and so y'all grew up together, and yeah. she she just kind of came to kick it with you at the Grammys, right? Yeah. How cool yeah. was that? Amazing, amazing, yeah. So, I always have a friend, you know, I have a list of friends that want to come you gotta with. you got to knock it out. And every year, <laughs> yeah. What's your, so what's your favorite part about the Grammys? Um, I think the, just the show... Yeah. Yeah, especially this year, like I loved Brandy Carlisle. Dude. I think she was amazing. She's on fire. Yes. So Have that you seen was... the highway women? No. Or the high women? No. So you know the highway men are? No. It was, so it was Chris Christopherson, Johnny Cash, Willie Nelson, and I think Merle Haggard. Okay. And they you know, like a super group basically. And yeah. so Brandy Carlisle, I'm gonna get this wrong. Brandy Carlisle, who's Jason Isbell's wife, Amanda Shires? Yeah. Um, her and then there's two other powerhouse okay. females, and so they started the high yeah. high, high women. I think high is what it's women. called. And, and so they went and covered um, a Fleetwood Mac song, but they're yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, Brandi Carlisle's on fire. I've been listening to her ever since. But yeah, I think every time at the show, it's always just interesting to see like the you get to a point of the show where you're like, wow, like everyone is good, everything amazing. It's the, like some of the best performers, you know. 
but you get to a point of show where like you build up all this like you know excitement for the show and then you're like I, I just couldn't know it could get better yeah like there it actually is like, and that's I actually, that raw talent. yeah and I actually didn't even know Brandi Carlyle before I went to the show I yeah. didn't know about her and I was just just like blown away yeah so that I was surprised how good Cardi B actually was yeah because like I think so much of hers like you know, manufactured because I mean, at the yeah. end of the day, she did come from reality TV. Yeah, but she's got raw talent too. Yeah, I loved Camila Cabello. I think she's super young, super just. I love her vibe. So, yeah, I really liked her too. And then Bruno Mars. I wasn't ever a Bruno Mars fan, and then I saw him like this dude can dance. Yeah. So. But even like last year too, even at that, you know, seeing like I loved Kesha, and I loved how like she had all these like other like women just singing backgrounds, like not trying to get you know in the front, just supporting her, singing background. So yeah, that really was good. like, yeah, so like, I think the performance is really awesome. Again, it's, I'm there for the music, you know, and all the networking is cool, but it's really awesome. Do you think, think either one of those three Grammys have like a special moment that like will live forever? Definitely. I think Alicia Keys is gonna, her as the host will be a big Yeah, one. definitely, yeah. Cool, but so yeah. last thing I got for you is who would you fanboy out around in the engineer side? Like, have you ever met Dave Cobb? I did, actually, did yeah. You fan, were you like, it's Dave Cobb? I did. That I met him with Butch Walker, and he's a. <laughs> and actually, also, if, uh, as a legit. matter of fact, Butch Walker, I was like, you don't understand. Uh, like, all the records he produced, I listened when I was a teenager. He's like and I super down to earth, right, Butch Walker? Yeah, but like I also like you don't like it's crazy when you get to do those type of records to think that like when I was a teenager in Italy and I was going through you know teenage emotion, I was listening to all the music he produced, and I was like, yeah. you don't understand how much like actually impact you have in people's life, you know. Yeah. Uh, but like fanning out, like I, um, I love. Well, I love Susan Rogers, and she actually had birthday because I think she like did engineering, but she also studied psychoacoustic, and that's like what I was really interested in. Like the studied what psychoacoustic. So like again, the, like science behind how the brain perceives sound, gotcha. and that's super interesting to me. So she actually got a, a degree in neuroscience. PhD in neuroscience, which is to wow. see someone doing both, that's to me is it's a goal, you know. Yeah. Um, and Sylvia Massey, too, I love her because of just her creativity and her you know, ability to just um, get a project done, but also have all this room for just being creative. And like she came to Atlanta a few months ago and she told us how she ran sound through a potato or through Gouda cheese. And you're like, what? She really did? She did. She, th I think she threw a piano off a cliff just to like, and, and she really explained that it may not be because of the sound you get out of that, but it's important to just foster the creative yeah. part of Always the process. Always checking out new stuff. Yeah, yeah you know, so it, yeah, I love those two So I actually do have one more for you. So okay. there's, you know, the narrative um, is, uh, you know, across the country is that the entertainment industry, specifically music, is still very male dominated. Yeah. And Coming from that, just seeing it from Atlanta, I don't agree with that at all because we have so many powerhouse women here. Tammy, Michelle, yeah. you, um, I mean, Peggy, the list goes on and on and on. Yeah. Do you think Atlanta is a little bit ahead of that um, in terms of the rest of the industry as far as, you know, women having an equal share and equal spot yeah. at the table, if not I actually think, leading? Yeah, I think, you know, the biggest conversation has been really in engineering and technology, and I think there's very, very few, like, you know, percentage wise, there's there are very few of, of few women that are working in engineering. Yeah. There are good ones, right? But yeah. like, there are very few. They've always been. They've you and always Maldi, been. I think, are the only. Hmm? Maldi, right? What's Help me out here. Is it, it Maldi? Melissa Maldi? Help me out here. She works with Grand Hustle, son. Yeah. We've seen her at uh, Grammys. If I'm getting her name wrong, then it's her Instagram handle. Maybe. Yeah. But you but are like the only two females in Atlanta I know that are like. Well, top, so top Simone level. Torres, okay. that, that's the person I was talking about with Cardi B and Camila Camello and Romani. She's here in Atlanta. She's a vocal producer, so engineer. Um, Daniela Rivera, she, used to, oh, she worked on Michael Jackson, Usher, all oh, sorts wow. of stuff. Yeah, is working with Field 10 here. So she's also in Atlanta. And yeah, we have, a, we have a, like a few, also around the country, like there are great, you know, For sure. engineer, yeah. Um, but you see it makes the, the technological sides where we need yeah. to kind of get more STEM. Definitely. Women in STEM and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. How but much I of think that did you get in high school? Okay. Or how much, well, let me rephrase that. So when you got to Berkeley, how much, can you walk into Berkeley knowing nothing? Or do you have to kind of be... I, th I felt like I walked to Berkeley, into Berkeley knowing nothing. Okay. Because... But you clearly didn't. I mean, you at least knew how to read music, right? No. 
Really? I mean, a little bit from piano, but like I, I took piano, classical piano for a while, and then I just forgot how to read music, and I went as a singer. So I, yeah, yes and no. I'm really good with the academic stuff, so that you know, I, I, I think I caught up pretty quickly with that. But I knew nothing of engineering, and I didn't even like consider that as a possible career option. One thing I had for me is that like my my mother, she's a physicist. So I feel like she already got into a field that was not you know so usual for women to do. Where did I meet your mom? Was it at Ian's party? Probably. All right, shout yeah. out to Ian Shoemaker. <laughs> shout out. Second shout out to yeah. Ian. Um, but yes, I think because of that, I, I never had these like preconception or like there's something I can't do. But it's really crazy that, you know, growing up, I never thought about, you know, having a career in like music production. I went there as a singer and I was like, ooh, I love this so much more. Yeah. You know, so I think that's really the biggest thing today, just exposing like young women to technology and just, you know, uh, signing them up for as many, you know, coding uh, like summer camps as much as you know they do with uh, with younger boys. Yeah. You know. Yes. So that makes sense. Yeah. So where can we find your work other than MartinaAlbano.com? Yes. Well, on Instagram, I am M A underscore Mastering. Um, and yeah, I mean, those both link to all my work bio and uh, and. You know, I'm easy again. I reply often, so. Awesome. It's good. Well, yeah. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. So you've been listening to Mind Your Business, sponsored by SR Homes, a builder focused on you. Visit them at srhomes.com, and we'll find Tug for next week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> at SR Homes, our end goal is to create a home that's unique to you, one that you and your family will enjoy for years to come. With over four decades of home building experience, SR Homes has become a top home builder in Atlanta offering a variety of communities in the most sought after locations. Locally owned and operated, SR Homes is a builder focused on you. For more information, visit us at srhomes.com.